this intro never gets easier. Welcome to the video, my name is Chris and I build productivity apps. If you've seen any of my other videos, it's probably about Ellie, which is a productivity app that I'm building, but that's not what this video is about. This is the second video in a series I'm calling Building Luna. Speaking of, this is Luna, this is who the app is named after. So, thanks for being in the video. Luna's a budgeting app that I'm building for myself because I spend way too much money eating out and I thought it'd also be fun to document, you know, building this app from scratch so you guys can see the entire process. Check out the first video if you wanna see why I'm building this app in the first place, but the summary is I need one that'll help me curb my spending. The second reason is I wanna get better as a designer, so this app is going to be a playground for me to experiment with motion design, interactions, all that stuff. Hopefully just push myself as a designer. So those are the two reasons that I'm building that, but again, go check out that video if you wanna, if you wanna learn more about that. So a common question I get is how do I get started? What does the first like month of building an app look like? So I've been working on the app for about two weeks now, so I thought it'd be cool to make a video outlining what I did in those two weeks so you guys can see what the starting process looks like. Okay, so there are two main things that I got done in these first two weeks, and it was spinning up a landing page and collecting emails, and we'll go over why I did that and how I did that later in the video. And then the second thing was I just made progress on the prototypes. By the way, I was really hesitant to make this video because I didn't actually make that much progress on the app. Like those two things sound really good, but I think I spent maybe like 30 minutes to an hour each day on the app. I was super busy the last two weeks. I have a full-time job, I have other side projects, and I was actually traveling a little bit. I wasn't actually able to spend much time on the app, but I decided to make this video because I wanted this to be realistic and show people that that's completely fine. Like, it's okay if you don't make a ton of progress, and there's so many videos and tweets about people saying, got my first 10,000 users in the first two weeks, or I launched the entire app in the first two weeks. I wanted to showcase the other side of that, you know, which I think is honestly more realistic for people because most people have full-time jobs or they're students, and developing apps is usually just a thing they do on the side or they do after work. I wanted to show people like what's realistic if you spend just like 30 minutes to an hour each day for two weeks and you know you're not doing this full time. Just wanted to mention that for you guys so you guys have that context. So let's go over what I did in the last two weeks. So I actually spun up the simple landing page and it truly is simple. It's just a screenshot, some text about what exactly it is, and then a place where people can submit their emails so they can get notified when it actually launches. I think I've launched a total of like five or six apps and this is the first time I decided to actually have like a wait list type thing. Okay, so there's two main reasons that I did it. If I'm being honest, one was I just wanted an excuse to buy the domain name. So it was like 2 a.m. and I was like, oh man, I really wanna get this domain name. So then I told myself, okay, I'll only get it if tonight I also launch a landing page to go with it. That was reason number one, I just need an excuse to buy the domain name. The second reason was, like I've heard a lot of people say like, oh, while you're building the app, you should totally spin up a landing page. Like gauging if people are actually interested. And so if you get a lot of signups, that means a lot of people are interested. And then also, you know, when you launch, you're able to get a couple hundred or a thousand users, you know, right out the door on day one. Which for something like the App Store is actually a pretty big deal when you launch because it can actually boost you on the charts for a little bit if you have a huge influx of downloads. So that was the second reason. I just wanted to see what would happen if I took people's advice and actually spun up a landing page before launching the product. Okay, so what was the process of doing this? I think this took like 40 minutes for me to do. So from buying the domain to actually launching this page took about 40 minutes. So I used this thing called Framer to do most of the landing pages. So I just pulled like a free template that I found um, from Framer and then just swapped everything out. But honestly, I think the hardest thing was the template was using MailChimp to do that email collection form, but I didn't really like that. And so I decided to switch to this thing called FormSpark because it was just simpler and cheaper. So I think I spent most of my time just like coming to that conclusion, swapping it out. But if someone else was to do this, I think this would take you like 15 minutes to do. So yeah, that was a process that took like less than an hour. Okay, so what were the results? You know, the landing page has been up for about like a week and a half now. If I just made the landing page and just did nothing, then obviously no one would sign up for it. So I promoted it in two ways. So the first is that I tweeted it out the minute I made it. And I don't have a massive following on Twitter. I have like 2,000 followers. But I was very surprised that people actually filled out the form. Just from that single tweet in the first like two hours, I got like 35 signups for the form. And shout out to Eric on Twitter, he actually filled out the form within 30 seconds of the page going live. I literally put it up and less than 30 seconds later, I got an email notification saying someone filled it out. So. That was a really cool feeling. Um, so shout out to you, Eric, for doing that. So from the tweet, I got like 30, 35 signups. And then the second way was I went back to the first YouTube video I made announcing me building the productivity app. It already had like 1500 views on it, but I went back and I just added a link to it in the description. And as I'm making this video, got about 78 signups right now. I think maybe an additional 40 something people have come from the link in that video. And then obviously I'm gonna put a link to it in this video. So if you're interested and you wanna get notified when it launches, go check it out. So the main takeaway from my first time doing this is I definitely should have done this sooner. If you're making an app or you know, you're in the process of building it, go spin up a landing page. You can literally do it in less than an hour. So yeah, that was the landing page and that was probably one of the biggest things I got done in the last two weeks. But again, that was like an hour of work. So the second thing was I made a little bit of progress on the prototypes. Nothing major, I was just working on this for like 30 minutes to an 
hour each day. So let me show you guys some of the changes that I was able to make in the last two weeks. I also want to reiterate, one of the major goals of the apps is for me to get better as a designer. So I'm choosing to focus on a lot of things that don't make any business sense, like spending like 10 hours working on drag and drop when I can just use Apple's off the shelf drag and drop and get this done in like 12 minutes. If I was treating this like a business, I would not do that. But for design practice, I think that makes sense. Okay, so the first thing I worked on was these page transitions. In my first video, I had these page transitions kind of done. One of the problems was it, it looked kind of jarring in my first video. It's kind of hard to explain, but I think when you click a tab and the page shifts, you kind of expect it to shift in a certain direction, like either left or right, depending on what the tab is. Mine was not accurate, so I had to rewrite this, I guess you can call it an algorithm. I had to rewrite this algorithm to account for that and make sure that it moves in the direction that the user is expecting. Uh, so that took like three hours to figure out, but it's a lot better right now. Still a lot of things that I can play with. I definitely want to play around with the speed and maybe the bounciness or something, because something is still kind of off with this, but at least the direction is correct. So that was number one. The next thing that I changed was the categories page. So this is a place where users can see all the different categories of budgets that they have. I'm modeling this page after this app called Family, which in my opinion, one of the most well-designed apps I've ever seen. And so they have this page. And when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is kind of what I want the categories page to look like. But the big thing that was interesting with this page was they have the ability to reorder the different wallets you have on the page. It was such a clean reordering experience. And I wanted to see, okay, how hard would it be to recreate this? In the two weeks, this is where all the time went. I think I spent like 10 plus hours trying to figure this out. So Apple does have a built-in drag and drop. So in like 10 minutes, I could have built like a really simple drag and drop thing, but you don't have control over everything. Like I can't really control the preview that you drag around on the screen. When you hold and drag a task in my other app, Ellie, you can see it kind of shrinks and kind of grays out. To my knowledge, I don't have control over that shrinking thing. Like it's always gonna be small. You just have to live with that if you use Apple's default things. So I decided to not use Apple's built-in drag and drop, build it from scratch. And uh, yeah, it just made the process infinitely more painful. It took like 10 hours, but this is the final result though. I think I got kind of close. Like you can hold it down, it pops it up. And then as you drag around, it starts reordering things. And it has this little gray thing on the back to show like where it's gonna be placed. It's not shrunk, it's like a full size card that's actually a little bit bigger. And you can't feel it here, but there's actually really nice haptics. So like the phone's vibrating a little bit every time things shift over, which really adds to the experience. This drag and drop, which I don't even know if people are gonna use it, to be honest. Like, I don't know how often people wanna drag these things. This took like 10 hours, but I learned a ton of things about gestures and animations and really laying a good foundation if I ever want to do some like complex drag stuff with this app. That was the next thing is this categories page, which is really basic. And the bulk of the time was just practicing this like drag and drop thing. Last thing, which I kind of barely got to was I started working on the new transaction page. I started doing some research, started the process of like redesigning this, but I didn't get too far. So that'll probably be covered in the next video. Those were kind of the updates that I made to the app. This is where it's at at the two week mark. We got a landing page up. We got this prototype that's kind of working. Now that I talk about it, you probably see why I was hesitant to make the video. It wasn't like that much progress for two weeks, but again, wanted to keep it realistic wanted to show you guys what's possible if you know you have a full-time job or you're in school or something and you want to do this on the side what can you get done in two weeks but hopefully this is kind of interesting to see the progress and a little bit of behind the scenes of what i was able to get done with the limited time hopefully we'll have another video next week and i'll make a lot more progress now that i'm back and not traveling or anything if you like this kind of content go check out my tiktok and instagram i post every other day with behind the scenes footage of me building productivity apps so if you like this kind of content go check those out obviously subscribe if you want to see more of this series thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video